And of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Phyllis died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. At this time, I invite Meredith and Ken to come forward and share the eulogy. You may be seated. Good afternoon, and welcome to all of you here and those of you watching on live stream to the funeral mass for Phyllis McQuaid. I'm Ken, and this is my sister Meredith, two of Phyllis's eight children. On behalf of all my brothers and sisters, we are so honored to provide this eulogy. Ours is a family raised, led, and bound together for more than seven decades by our remarkable mother. And while this is a time of mourning for us, it's also a time of family gratitude for her extraordinary life of 95 years. The votives that are lit in the, on the table in the middle were lit earlier today by our extended family. Now, Phyllis Haas was born in the tiny town of Frazee, Minnesota in 1928. Although she grew up during the Depression, she nonetheless remembered childhood as a happy time enriched by the simple pleasures of home-cooked meals, her father's vegetable garden, nickel movies, and the company of friends and family. Through these childhood experiences, mom developed a deep appreciation for the dignity of hard work, 
resilience, thriftiness, charity, community, friends, and family. Values that would imbue her personality and guide the remainder of her life. Mom was a devout Catholic who worked very hard to follow the teachings of Christ. Her deep faith was a comfort to her throughout her life. The Dalai Lama said, my religion is kindness. Our mom's religion was too. But her religion had many creeds. Mom had a universal, she had an inclusive heart. She believed that everyone deserved to feel heard, respected, and loved, and to be treated with kindness. At the onset of World War II, Mom was just entering high school. She watched her brothers, her cousins, and other frazy boys go off to war, listened to the radio every evening for the news, shared in the rationing and scrap collections, and watched the astonishing response of the United States war effort, an effort in which all Americans came together and contributed in one way or another. This shaped her belief that people from all walks of life should work together to serve the common good. For the rest of her life, she attended July 4th parades and Memorial Day services, waving her flag with pride and reverence. Mom's religion was patriotism. After high school, Phyllis left home to train for a career as a radio broadcaster. She learned upon arriving at the program that it was actually a training school for air traffic controllers. And while it wasn't a career she ever thought she wanted, it was a job she ended up doing as she navigated the busy lives of her children. And then, Mom took a train to visit her sister, Marion, who was living in New Hampshire. While working as a secretary at the Manchester Union Leader, she caught the eye of a somewhat older and very debonair copy editor and World War II veteran, Joe McQuaid. Over the ensuing five years, marriage and three children followed in rapid succession. Well, apparently you could take the girl out of Minnesota, but you couldn't take Minnesota out of the girl. She convinced our father to take a copy editor job at the Minneapolis Tribune, and they moved to Minnesota. In 1961, they bought their first and only house in St. Louis Park, which was shared by all 10 of us, ultimately, and Cinder, the first of many, many dogs. This would be mom's home for the next 46 years. Now, because our father worked nights, mom was the primary parent and household manager. She was the first person up in the morning and the last one in bed at night, seldom sleeping more than six hours. When we awoke, breakfast was on the table and the lunches were packed. When we arrived home from school, there was a snack waiting for us. And every night, every night, we ate a home-cooked meal together, eight of us kids and mom crowded around the kitchen counter and a pull-out breadboard. The details of managing the health and wellness of a family of this size, not to mention balancing the checkbook, must have been daunting. But of that, we knew very little, except that mom did take on many extra jobs to make ends meet. It was a noisy and chaotic home that was filled with laughter, tears, debates, games, and music. Mom's third religion was family. Her management style was tough love, but it really was more love than tough. Her toughness amounted to her expectations for familial cooperation, mutual respect, and contributions to the common good, all behavior that she modeled. Discipline was seldom needed. Her raised voice and arching eyebrow were enough to bring us to attention. We were taught not to complain and to be grateful for what we had. If we whined that the meat was tough, her response would be, well, it's tougher when there isn't any. Despite our family size, mom maintained a unique and deep connection to all of us throughout our lives. She found ways to bond with each of us individually when we were children, through schoolwork, family chores, driving us on our paper routes in sub-zero temperatures, or sharing naps. While it seems almost incomprehensible now, she made each one of us feel worthy of her attention. As we left home, she continued to find creative ways to maintain connections with her children and grandchildren. 
And as her children moved on, mom's attention expanded to the broader St. Louis Park community. Her successful 15-year political career is known to many of you here, first as St. Louis Park School Board member, mayor of St. Louis Park, and then finally two terms as state senator. She often said that raising eight children helped her in getting politicians to work together. Although she was affiliated with the Republican Party, she was fiscally conservative but socially liberal. She was a strong advocate for civil rights, gay rights, public education, public transit, and an early proponent of recycling. She was uh, hugely committed to building a St. Louis Park that was more diverse and more inclusive. She was a big supporter of the St. Louis Park Women's Club, the St. Louis Park Emergency Program, and the founder of the Parktacular Festival. And after all that, at age 80, she moved to Aquila Commons Cooperative and began writing an entirely new but equally fulfilling chapter of her life. At Aquila, she was a self-appointed welcome wagon for new residents. She served on the cooperative board and wrote a column in the monthly newsletter. She volunteered at Methodist Hospital and remained active in the women's club. She played bridge, she organized wine tastings, and she was in a bowling league until she was 90. And she zealously followed her Minnesota twins. All of this while maintaining close connections with her friends of many, many years. Our mom's religion was community. And here's something you most surely didn't know about Phyllis. She invented the garage sale. <laughs> Holding her first one in 1960, and Though this claim is apocryphal, she absolutely believed it. She certainly held many of her own, and for years, a favorite Saturday morning activity was visiting garage sales in St. Louis Park in Edina and chatting with the neighbors. Later in life, she launched her own small cottage industry called Chill Out, sewing polar fleece jackets, bathrobes, scarves, and mittens. It's not clear that she ever made much money on this venture. That wasn't really the point. She enjoyed creating something and having another way to connect to people. Well, none of this was ever easy, of course. Not raising eight kids with scarce resources, not being one of very few women in politics, not caring for our dad in his final years, and not running her own business. But mom did it all with a joyful heart, humor, and fearlessness. In her 60s, as a state senator, she overcame her intense fear of freeway driving, navigating the ice, snow, and dark of night. In a scene reminiscent of a summer blockbuster movie, she once vanquished a swarm of bees attacking her grandchildren. And in order to walk her beloved dogs twice daily in the winter, she wore broomball shoes to survive the treacherous ice. Perhaps most remarkable, is the fact that for the last 25 years of her life, she was engaged and active despite her profound hearing loss. Finally, Mama's religion was gratitude. In the last decade of her life, she spoke often of her blessings, the love, friends, family, and community. She concluded each family gathering by speaking for a few moments about the importance of those occasions, reminding all of us to maintain family traditions after she was gone. Reflecting upon the happy trajectory of her own life, she would finish by saying, God has been so, so good to me. And while I know I don't have many of these days left, I am so grateful for this one. And so it is we find ourselves gathered here to celebrate all of her days, from her first to her last. Phyllis McQuaid lived a long and wonderful life. It was a life blessed with family, friends, spirituality, and service, infused throughout with kindness. We are grateful to have been raised by a woman who emphasized the importance of several creeds, kindness, patriotism, family, community, and gratitude. On behalf of all of the McQuaid children, and that includes Joanne, Susan, Amy, Dan, Paul, and Meg. Thank you for joining us this afternoon to honor her spirit and her memory. Good job. Good job.
Please stand. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life, so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by your mercy you may command the name of your servant Phyllis to be inscribed in the book of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time I invite Paul to come forward for the first reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings. you, and famine will bring you no fear. Under his wings your refuge, his faithfulness your shield, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings. command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings,
the palm of his hand. Please stand for the gospel. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It's an honor to celebrate this funeral for Phyllis today, and I'll echo the family's welcome uh, to the friends and uh, other visitors who are here to support uh, Phyllis's children and grandchildren and other relatives in their grief and in also their gratitude to the Lord for the gift of Phyllis's life. The eulogy was probably the most polished eulogy I've heard uh, at a funeral as a priest, so surely a testament to Phyllis's own uh, formation uh, of her family. Um, because of its sort of scope, I'm going to keep my own homily short today. I asked the deacon in the sacristy, what party was uh, Phyllis associated with in my ignorance um, of history, local history? And the deacon said, Catholic. <laughs> And one of my favorite parts about being Catholic is that it spans categories and parties and ideologies uh, because it's not about an ideology or a party, it's about a person. Catholicism is about Jesus Christ. And that's why we are here today in a church, in a Catholic church, rather than somewhere else. We want to ask Jesus to be part of our prayer for Phyllis today. We pray for Phyllis that as she goes to meet God, which all of us will do someday at the end of our life, 
We will stand before God who will be our judge. We pray that she will get to hear the words that all of us may hope to hear one day as well. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's rest. Or in terms of today's gospel, come to the place I have prepared for you. We also come today to give thanks to God for the life of Phyllis. And we also ask God to turn our hearts more fully to him. Because the closer that we are to Jesus, the closer that we are to our loved ones who have died. As Catholics, we believe in the communion of saints. That means we believe that after death, those who have died in God's friendship don't simply cease to exist, and they don't simply become oblivious to everything. But in God, they remain connected to us. More than in just a Hollywood or Hallmark sense, a real connection through the living God. I want to encourage the family and relatives and friends of Phyllis to remain close to Jesus and to the church. Because the closer you are to Jesus and the Catholic Church, the closer you will be to your mother, to your grandmother, to your relative. What a beautiful way to honor her memory. Today at communion, when you look at the host raised as the bells ring, you can think that that's Jesus. And we're praying today that Phyllis is right there with him in heaven. So as you see the host, you can think of Phyllis. You can even ask her, as you pray for her, to pray for you. So that where, God willing, she is, one day, God willing, you will be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I invite Phyllis's grandchildren, Emily, David, and Libby, to come forward for the prayers of the faithful. Please stand. Let us come to our loving Father, asking him to give eternal rest to the departed and comfort and hope to the living. Uh, for Phyllis and all the faithful departed, may they soon enter into the joy of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Phyllis who mourn her loss, may they be comforted by God's Boundless compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we may know um, of God's love for us and grow closer to Him each day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Storm can shake my inmost 
most calm while to that rock I'm clinging since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth how can I keep from singing through all the tumult and the strife I hear that music ringing, it finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Phyllis, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Phyllis, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Take away. 
Please kneel. All God's children are welcome at this holy mass. At communion time, Catholics who are practicing their faith are welcome to receive communion in the front in the usual way. If you're not Catholic or not practicing, you're welcome to come forward to receive a blessing. Simply cross your hands over your heart when you arrive in front of the priest or other minister. You're also welcome to remain in your pews and pray whatever makes you most comfortable. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
may be seated. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that your servant Phyllis, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Immediately after uh, the Mass concludes, there will be a luncheon, and that is at the Minneapolis Golf Club in St. Louis Park. The burial will take place at a later time at Fort Snelling. Thank you again for being here today. Uh, and to the family, I want to assure you of uh, my prayers and the prayers of um, the parish uh, as you mourn the loss of your mother, of your grandmother, also as you give thanks to God for the gift of her life. Um, so God bless you all, and thank you for being here. With faith in Jesus Christ, let us pray with confidence to God, in whose sight all creation lives, that he will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our sister and command her soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant her a merciful judgment, deliverance from death, and pardon of sin. May Christ the Good Shepherd carry her home to be at peace with the Father. May she rejoice forever in the presence of the eternal King and in the company of all the saints. We commend the soul of Phyllis, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the sure hope of the resurrection, let us take leave of our sister. Heaven. 
hands are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the Son, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays, the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the wind that blows through the trees, the sea's mighty storms, the gentlest breeze. They blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory. Thank you for playing. Oh, thanks. And for all the questions.